Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, what a wonderful day to be alive. What a wonderful day to serve the most high living God. For he alone is worthy of all praise, all honor, and all glory. Well, praise God this morning. I uh, want to thank God for each and every one of you who are tuning in this morning to be a part of this uh, live. Uh, we just excited about Jesus and all that he has done for us. Uh, so let's, uh, let's give him praise this morning. Let's honor him this morning. Let's worship uh, him this morning for all he has done and all he is doing. I, well, here it's raining and um, it's uh, going to be a rainy day all day. And so we're going to thank God for the rain this morning. Praise God. We're going to believe him that uh, all is well with us and that uh, no good thing is he withholding from them who walk uprightly. And so we declare that we are those who walk uprightly. We are the mature this morning. And so um, what he's done for us is he's blessed us tremendously. And so God bless you, each and every one of you for being here. I, I'm, I'm just excited about uh, this opportunity to have uh, and, and spend time with each one of you. Um, so let's trust in the Lord and uh, lean not to our own understanding and he will truly direct our path. Amen. Amen. Um, I want you to remember that uh, these are some uh, some tough times, but these are also times that we're going to give God praise for everything that he's doing and how he's holding our hand, keeping us through uh, this pandemic and all of these other trials that uh, we are experiencing. How, how, how many of you know that uh, uh, he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you? Uh, he'll be with you to the end of the age. And so uh, just trust God this morning. Trust him that uh, he's right there with you. Uh, he, he is not, he has not forsaken us, forsaken us uh, at all because he's a good God. Amen. So give, uh, give the most high God, uh, give him uh, thanks and give him praise for, for what he's done and what he's doing in our lives. Uh, this morning, we're going to talk to you this morning about the way of escape. Um, and when, you, when we talk about all the things that are happening uh, in our lives, uh, the things that we're experiencing, uh, boy, uh, you can, you can uh, definitely say you're looking for a way out. Uh, what is the way out? Um, and the way out is through Jesus and his sacrifice for us and what he's done. Uh, when you're dealing with sickness and disease, come on, he's the escape. He's the way out. He's the, he's the healer. Come on, somebody. Uh, when you're dealing with uh, lack, when you, when you can't seem to have enough, then he is more than enough. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. Glory to God. Uh, when there's trouble in your home, he's the deliverer. Uh, he is the peace of God. He is the one that brings wholeness to every situation. Uh, if you are troubled this morning, uh, turn to him because he brings peace uh, in the midst of a storm. Oh my God. So I, I want to share with you this morning from my heart, from the word of God, how Christ is the escape, but not, not just uh, give you some superficial answers this morning, but I want to give you something practical uh, that you may apply to your everyday life. Uh, I'm going to say some stuff this morning. And a few years ago, I said this in um, a church in, in White, Clark County. Uh, and when I made the statement, um, the people uh, never went past the, my original statement uh, because they could not grasp uh, what I said, and and but I, I'm standing on the word. I'm do, I'm going to declare it to you today, uh, because uh, most of us think that we're going to get God, and God's going to get us uh, because of the, our lives and and the things that we do, quote unquote, wrong. Um, now, 
I'm not, and I, I shouldn't even have to do this, but I, I'm not going to uh, sanction any wrong in your life. I'm not going to sign off on anything wrong in your life. Uh, that's not our uh, will, uh, our desire. Our desire is to move you from being so sin conscious to understanding what the will of the Lord is for your life. Amen. And, and the sin conscience is not the will of uh, uh, the Lord for your life. Uh, when you stay focused on Jesus, looking unto him who is the author and finisher of faith, when you do that, then uh, you, 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 you actually spiritually move from the sin conscience. And when you move from the sin conscience, now you have a God conscience. Ah, glory to God. That's where uh, he wants you to be. He wants you to be in that place where you have a God conscience. And when you look at your life after, after walking with him, after uh, being in a relationship with him for so long, you, when you, when, like the songwriter says, when you look back over your life, uh, you can see how you made it over because your, your con conscious and your focus was not on what you do, but what he's done. Glory to God. And so I, I, I want to get you there this morning because these holidays are here and and you're going uh, there's a whole lot of struggle anyway and now you got the weight of the holidays added on top of it and then you're dealing with all this stuff that people say that you should be doing or have to do uh I even challenge you not to not to spend money from November 26th to uh, November 25th on quote unquote Christmas let's sit down and have a uh, a meal with our family and explain to them why we celebrate this thing called Christmas. It's about the life of Christ, not about toys, not about a Christmas tree. It's, it's not about any of that. Now, I'm, I'm one of those guys that I like, I love for my wife to, to, to decorate stuff, but, uh, uh, you know, all of that is changing in me because I'm becoming more God conscious than, than commercialized, whatever it is, uh, for a holiday. So let's get into this thing and uh, see how much we can we can cover this morning. Uh, uh, again, this is called the way of escape. And and Jesus, Yeshua, uh, he is the way of escape. A amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you and honor you for this time of fellowship around your word. Thank you for these, your sheep that have come. Thank you that the word goes forth unhindered by any satanic force this morning. It will accomplish all that it's been set out to do in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen. See, when you when you focus on the way of escape, which is Christ, uh, it, uh, it lifts burdens, it lifts pressure, uh, it removes stress from your life. Hey, that, that's what he does. He removes stress and pressure. He said, listen, all of you who are laboring and heavy laden, you come to me and I will cause what you've been struggling to try to ha make happen. I will cause it to happen. Oh, glory to God. He says, because my burdens is light. Come on. You need to come unto me, learn of me. Come on. You see, most, most of us don't want to take the time to learn anything because, uh, you know, we want it spoon fed. We want it right now. But I'm telling you, he said, come on, learn of me. Take my yoke put it on you. It's easy. It's light. Why? Because when you put on my yoke, I'm in there with you. And just like uh, that they've done for, for centuries, they always put the burden of the yoke on the a mature oxen, glory to God, on the oxen who's been there. I'm telling you, Jesus has been there. He says he's been tempted in every way that we have uh, without sin, glory to God. So so you got to understand who he is, who who, who Yeshua is. He is the, the ox that you need to be yoked up with, glory to God, amen. So everything that you've been struggling, everything that you've been sweating, everything you've been toiling to make happen. He says, if you come to me, I will cause it to happen. Listen, if you read uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 in the uh, uh, Amplified Bible, it is the most a uh, direct or closest uh, translation of the Greek that you can find. He said, I'll cause it to happen. 
So, so uh, uh, re remember to call something to happen is a whole lot easier than you sweating, you're, you're struggling to try to make it to happen. So stay with me and, 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 and watch this uh, thing about uh, uh, the way of escape. Now, uh, here, here's what I want you to know. In the way of escape, uh, um, the most high God, he, he, he's not concerned about your sin the way you are and the way other people are. And that's, that's the statement that got me in trouble. I, I, I kind of tweaked it a little bit, but I, I, I literally said he's not concerned about your sin. And the reason why he's not concerned about your sin, and, 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 and sin is the issue. Sin is the issue because uh, sin uh, gets us to the place where we think God is not going to come through for us. Oh, I better not do this. I better walk a chalk line. I, if I don't, if I, if I, if I, if I do this, if I say that, if I go there, uh, then God won't bless me. I'm here to tell you, child of God, that God has already blessed you. You better try to get your head in the game. Glory to God. He's already blessed you. Now, 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 this thing is so true because when God deals with his people, he deals with his people and always have dealt with his people with grace. He's always dealt with his people with something called unmerited favor. There's nothing you or I could ever do to earn the love of God. There's, that, that we could never be good enough that, 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 ha that had to have been a sacrifice. The sacrifice is Jesus himself to get us to the place where God now sees us in a, in a favorable light. The, the favor of God is on you. T.D. Jake says it like this, favor ain't fair, glory to God. It's because he favors you. It's because the blessing of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow. Not hard work, not not uh, uh, dotting every I and crossing every T. It's your trust. Uh, glory to God. I, I, I go right back to that message. It's your trust. And we don't have a, 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 a problem uh, with money. We have a trust issue. It's a trust problem. When, you, when you're struggling financially, you have a trust problem because you're not hearing and obeying what you hear. When you obey what you hear, you'll do uh, what he what he's spoken to you. Now, when he tells you to give that dime out the dollar, when he tells you to give 20 cents out the dollar, come on, talk to me, somebody. When he tells you to give the nickel out the dollar, then you obey. Him. So, so that's called trust right there. And so if you have a trust issue, you're going to be broke. Glory to God. If you have a trust issue, you, you, you're going to struggle in your physical body. If you have a trust issue, you're going to always look looking for a, a sugar daddy or, or some kind of sweet thing. If you have a trust issue, your problems become magnified and the promise becomes small and minute. The promise, child of God, is always bigger than the problem. I wish I had some help up in here. You ought to get in this book and find out what the promise is. I understand principle, but listen, promise is bigger than principle. Oh, glory to God. Because when you hold on to the, oh, uh, Jesus is the promise. That's why you need to hear his voice and obey what you hear. Now, don't struggle with that because I'm going to take you to 101. God good, devil bad. Got it? God good, devil bad. So when you when I start telling you about obeying his voice, God good, devil bad. The devil's not going to tell you to do something good. He's not going to tell you to give. He's not going to tell you to pray. Come on, talk to me. Glory to God. It's going to be the Holy Spirit himself that's going to lead and guide you in Jesus promised it. You hear me? You hear me real good. He says, I got to go to the Father. I got to get out of here, but since, since I'm leaving, I'm going to pray to the Father that he sends you another comforter. Oh, what? What is a comforter? Not something soft, not something that you put on your bed to keep you all warm. No, this comforter is an iron rod in your back. Come on, somebody. This comforter is giving you some intestinal fortitude. Come on. This com comforter gives you cojones to stand up and say, I heard from the Lord and my mama won't stop me from obeying and my sweetheart won't stop me from obeying and my children won't stop me me from obeying. I 
heard the voice of God. I'm being led by the Spirit. Glory to God. So hold on to what God is saying in this dispensation. Why? Because in sundry times, Hebrews chapter 1, in sundry times, he spoke to us by the prophets, but now he's speaking to us through his son. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. So God, I want to get back to my point here. God himself, he's not concerned about your sin the way that you are and the way that your nosy neighbors are. Hear me real good. The people that's a peeping and, and trying to see who you are. Uh, is that really you? Are you going to continue to do that? I remember when you was. Come on, forget all that. God is not concerned. Now I'm going to tell you why God is not concerned. I'm going to take you right here real quick to Psalms 130. Psalms 130. Hear this, and I, I want to I wanna, I wanna read it to you from the New Living Translation because it'll bless your socks off. Watch this, Psalms 130, and, and we're going to we're going to look at verses one through three, but verse three is where we want to be. Why it says, from the depths of despair, O Lord, I call for your help. Hear my cry, O Lord. Pay attention to my prayer. So watch this. In, in, in your worst moment, in your worst time, when you've done the worst, when you feel the lowest, when you feel like nobody, listen, if, 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 if your mama won't hear you, if your daddy won't hear you, if, if, if the person you snore in, in their face at night won't hear you, he says, when you're at your worst, when you're in the depths of despair, you better call out to the Lord. You better pray. Amen. You better say something to God. Watch this. He says, verse two, hear my cry, O Lord. Pay attention to my prayer. Verse three, Lord, if you kept a record of, sin, of our sins, who, O Lord, could ever survive? Verse four, I got to give you verse four. I can't stop at three. Watch this. But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fit. Oh, come on here, somebody. That we might learn to fit. What does he offer? He offer forgiveness. So God's not concerned about your sin like that. Why? Because he already sent the cure for sin. He's already sent the final uh, 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 definition that clears it all up. He's uh, uh, sent the antidote, the, the vaccine. Come on here, somebody. He's already sent the cure. Watch this. Uh, I believe it's uh, 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 Micah chapter 7. He says, what I'll do is I'll take your sins and cast them into the sea of forgetfulness to never rise against you again. Oh, come on, church of, of the living God. Watch this. Psalms 103 verse 12 says, what I will do for you is I'll take your sins and separate them as far as the east is from the west. Now, scientists say, if you go north, you'll eventually end up in the south. But if you go east, you'll never end up in the west. Come on, somebody. He, he, God knows what he's doing he, be, when he sent Jesus, when he sent the Messiah, when he sent Yeshua HaMashiach, when he sent him, he knew what he was doing. He says, listen, I am going to give you a way of escape. That's why you keep your eyes on him. That's why you keep, oh, the old folks said, keep your hand in the winding change. Come on, somebody. Hold on to him. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my future. I'm not going to be worried about anything because I've got the way of escaping. Watch this. The scripture says uh, when trouble comes, it, it has to come with the way of escape. You can't get trouble. Trouble can, can never come by itself. It always has to show up with the way of escape. You got to open your mouth, open your eyes, pay attention, open your ears, listen at the voice of the Holy Spirit because when the temptation comes, when the trouble comes, when the situation and the circumstances get out of control, you better peep around the corner, duck, do whatever you got to do. Why? Because the way of escape is there as well. Jesus has made a way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And here it is, Jesse, the planner said, if he's the way, you can't get lost. If he's the truth, you can never be taken by a lie. And if he's the life, the devil sure can't kill you. Back up off me. Miss me with all that COVID stuff. Why? Because I know the healer. I know the redeemer. Glory to God. And his name is Jesus. Are you hearing me this morning? He's our way of escape. So God is not concerned about your sin the way that you are and the way that your neighbors 
other people are. Don't, don't ever let people keep you out of the will of God. Don't ever let what they think, what they believe keep you out. You got to do what God says do. Listen, if you're going if you're going to uh, run your home the way that God says run your home, forget what your brother say. Can forget what your sister say. Come on. Run your home like God says. Forget what the neighbor say. Listen, we're not we're not caught up in this world to 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 be uh uh, uh pleasing this world. We come to please the one that sent us. Amen. Listen, you, you no no soldier goes to warfare uh, at his own cost. So we don't get caught up in this thing. God pays our bills. Amen. God, God uh, cares for us. Amen. He's the one that clears our conscience. Amen. But not, 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 not people. Not, I, I, no, 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 not people, not circumstance, not situation. Uh, you, you still the head, not the tail. Come on, tell yourself that you still a London, not a bar. You still above only never beneath. That's who you are. Glory to God. So, 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 so now change your posture and your position. Come on, change, change, change how you stand. Glory to God. Change how you talk. Yeah, glory to God. Lift your head up. Stick your chest out. Why? Because the greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's already made an escape for you. Ah, glory to God. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And the scripture says that you are now seated in heavenly places in him. Glory to God. In him we live, move, and have our being. Glory to God. Our escape comes because of what Christ has done, not because of what I do or what you do. Amen. It's because we stay focused on him. My God. Listen, you're moving into a season here. I, I got to talk about this. You're moving into a season here where now it's, it's, it's getting uh, to, to the nitty gritty is uh, rubber meeting the road where you have to pay attention to what is being spoken. Amen. Because everything that you do now has to be uh, just so in line with the word of God. Because he, he, he's delivered you already. He's given you pro divine protection already. So if you if you err, you go outside of the will of God, then you, you're missing what he's told you to do. Listen, listen, it's just like this. He says, come. And Peter said, okay, I'm, I'm coming. And he walked out the, uh, out of the boat. Uh, I, I believe it was uh, Pastor Creed L. Bolden said one time, G, uh, Peter walked on the the word of God, C-O-M-E, came out and, and walked on that on that word because he was walking on the water. But no, it's, it's something had to have him because we know water won't hold you. Come on, water won't uh, suspend you like that and support you like that. So he had to be walking on something greater than water. He's walking on the word of God and he's still speaking today. Come on, somebody. If you if you listen and obey what you hear, you're going to see the results that he has for you. I, 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 I keep hearing this in my spirit. There's a young lady, I need to share this with you. I've shared it with you before. There's a young lady in our church who uh, has a business. And, and, and of course, when COVID hit, the business had to close. But she heard in her spirit, go ahead and start making those cakes now. Glory to God. Listen, cake business just boomed, man, like nothing. All during the time of the pandemic, all during this time where, 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 the, where businesses could not be open, here it is. She's in her kitchen and she's making cakes and people are buying cakes like crazy. Listen, I, I, I'm not supposed to have cake like that, but man, I had to have that caramel cake with the with the peanuts and stuff on. Oh, yep, Lord Jesus. Listen, but anyway, I, I got to get back to my message. Watch this. Uh, that woman make those cakes and people start buying cakes like crazy. And then she said, okay, I heard from the Holy Spirit. What I need to do now is I need to line my paperwork up, you know, because Uncle Sam might want some of this. And and, and people will say stuff and put you out on Front Street and then you messed up. So so what did she do? She went and lined up paper. Y'all better hear me. There ain't nothing wrong with a hustle. Just make sure it's a legal hustle. Glory to God. Hear from the Holy Spirit. Do what he's telling you to do. Why? Because he has already uh, he said, listen, when he comes, he's going to lead in God. He's not going to speak to you of anything of his own. He's going to speak of that that I declared already. Jesus is the way of escape. If you are in trouble now, if things are hard now, will you stop and say, listen, God, I, I know you've already, uh, yeah, 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 that's it right there. That's it right there. Listen, long time ago, Eddie Long from, from New Birth said this. He says, when I pray now, I don't go in and just, you know, do a whole lot of stuff. I basically say, God, I 
I know you've already done something. Just show me what you've done. Glory to God. And he said he'd sit there and, and, and give God praise until he hear his voice. And once he hear his voice, he followed that voice. Y'all better hear me real good. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. My mama used to sing a song. There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. Glory to God. He's the same. He is, there's no respect to persons in him. Will you, will you listen? Will you obey? Will you understand that there's a way of escape already? It's already made for you. The way out is already there. Glory to God. Heaven does not have to have a meeting because trouble showed up at your door. My good friend, Pastor Tyrone Poe, helped me with my message this morning. Uh, he didn't know he was helping me, but he helped me with my message this morning. But P Pogue says it like this. Sometimes need more will show up at your door. And for most of us, when need more shows up, we do crazy things. We do foolish things. We don't sit down to hear from God. We don't understand that he's already made of his. He, he knew Nemo was show, going to show up. Nemo is not a surprise to our, our Savior, our Lord. So when Nemo shows up, you just be ready to hear from God. And when you hear from him, allow him to do what he needs to do. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Just trust in the Lord. I'm trying to tell you he's the way of escape. I'm, I'm trying to get to my message, but watch this, watch this. He says, all you need to understand is he separated your sins as far as the east is from the west. See, sin is not a problem with God. God does not consider sin uh, like we consider sin. Why? Because God has all confidence. He said, listen, uh, I, I, I've given to you the sepulcher. He, he gave Jesus the sepulcher. That means, you you know, like, uh, uh, what was her name? Uh, if I perish, Esther, if I perish, let me perish. I'm going to see the king. And when she walked in, the king extended the sepulcher. That means, come on, child, you can you can, you can can come before the king and, and have this conference. Come on, say whatever you need to say. Do whatever you need to do. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm open to you. Come on, here, somebody. Listen, God gave Jesus the sepulcher. And so when he gave Jesus the sepulcher and set him at his right hand, he says, I'm open to you. And so every time you have a problem and, and God is sitting on the throne trying uh, you don't want to know uh, uh, which direction Jesus just show showing the holes in the hands just show him the, the sepulcher he says look here I, I, I've already made a way for you God has already made a way for you will you just obey him and not be selfish now will you will you turn from uh, your ideas and your own thoughts come on here will you will you will you surrender see th my next point is this uh, th that should always be evidence in your life that Christ lives in you. That's, that's your, your life should be evident that Christ lives in you. Uh, we, we, we don't live any kind of way. Listen, I, I understand the temptation is that to go your own way. As a matter of fact, the scripture says all we like sheep have gone astray. Every one of us like sheep have gone astray. Watch this. Uh, 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 all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But just like all have uh, sinned and come short of the glory of God, all can be made righteous. Come on, somebody. All can be made righteous by the sacrifice of Jesus, by just trusting in him, by believing in him, putting your faith, all your weight on what he's done, not how good you are. Amen. Not how smart you are, not how clever you are. Amen. Listen, I'm talking to men this morning. I want to say this to men. Listen, you need to understand it's not because of your might that turns that thing around in your life or in your relationship is because you trust in him, not by might, not power, it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. So, so men, stop trying to force things to happen in your relationship and allow God to do what he's going to do. Amen. Amen. Doesn't make you weak. Doesn't make you less of a man. Amen. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of men have lost some good women because they won't force things and don't you dare do it any, any longer. You let God uh, lead you. Amen. Watch this. He says, um, Romans chapter six, let's go to Romans chapter six, um, verse 11, verse 11. Uh, likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now notice he says, here's what our part is. Here's what your part is. Now remember, God's not concerned about sin like you and, and other people are concerned. So he says, but you got a part to play. You have to reckon yourself dead unto sin. You have to reckon. Now, 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 now remember um, when Paul wrote this, Paul was saying to reckon means to have an account, to have an account. I, I, I live here in, in Mount Vernon, Alabama, and I have an account with Alabama Power. I have an account with Alabama Power. So, so because I have an account with Alabama Power, uh, I, I'm, I'm assured that if everything's working well in this system, I have electricity, lights, my, 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 my cooling unit, my heating unit uh, is going to operate if everything is working properly because I have an account with them. So you, you, you can't, you can't uh, have an account or, or think that, uh, uh, not have an account and think that your, your power or your lights are going to come on. But if you know you have an account, all you do is hit the switch. Now, now watch this. If the bill is paid and you know you have an account, there's, there's an account in your name. When you hit the switch, you say, oh, no, uh, if the lights don't come on. Oh, oh no, something, something wrong with them. I need to call Alabama Power. You, you don't go outside, climb up to the power pole and work with that electricity. You don't do that. No, you just call them. Ah, glory to God. Because they're the ones that's responsible for bringing the power into your house so you can hit the switch and have light. You don't, you don't, you don't go to work. You don't, you're, you're not sweating that. Listen, I paid my bill. It's your response. Listen, listen, you call that 1-800 number. You say, listen, uh, 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 my light's out. I paid my bill. What's going on here? As a matter of fact, y'all going to give me, uh, prorate my bill or something because I, I, I'm in the dark. Or, uh, it's hot or it's cold. I, I need to cook or whatever it is. You, you, I mean, you go off. You go off because you understand you have an account and the account is right. Here he's saying, you need to understand there's an account that your sin has been paid for. There's an account that the devil has no more power over you. You, you need to understand that, listen, so, so, so when, when, when it's time for you to get a breakthrough, when it's time for you to get, get delivered, you don't say, well, I better go and do this and I better go and do that. No, no, no. It's because Yahshua has already made the way, already paid the way. Listen, you just call him and say, Father, I know what you've done. He says, you got to understand you have an account. So I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm not going to move into this action. I'm not going to get myself caught up in this, that, and the other. No, no, no. I, I, I'm free from all that. I, I'm not going to even do what other people say I ought to do unless they sent by God to give me a word. Come on, somebody. My account is paid in full. I know I'm supposed to have the power. So all I do is call the one who is in charge of the power. And they come and get me, listen, not, they got a system now that they'll say, listen, if you want us to, just press this button and we'll call you back to let you know when it comes on. Listen, I ain't never heard anything like that. If I'm in the house and the power comes on, I know it's on. But they say, we'll call you. Come on. If you just have a little talk with Jesus, everything will be all right. Come on here. All you got to do is talk to him because he knows what he's done for you. The problem is you don't know what you, what he's done for you. You don't understand that there's an account in heaven that your sins have been paid for. And once you understand that your uh, sins have been paid for, you'll sit back and say, no, no, that's not, that, that don't work over here. I understand that's going on and this going on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to praise him while I'm in the dark. I'm going to praise him while you're trying to cut something off 
going to praise him while you're trying to steal this from me, Satan. I'm going to give him glory because I understand who he is and what he's done for me already. Now, not only do I understand who he is and what he's done for me already, I understand who I am and whose I am. Glory to God. I've been bought with a price. I'm not my own. So I'm going to give him praise right here. Even when the doctor says that it don't look good, I'm going to praise him anyhow. Even when the bill collector the knocked on my door, I'm going to praise him anyhow. Come on, somebody. When my sweetheart ain't so sweet, I'm going to give him some praise anyhow. Why? Because I got an account and the account's been paid and it's paid in full and all is well. Amen. That's verse 11. Watch verse 12. Let not sin, therefore. What? 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 You mean to tell me it's your responsibility to let it not? Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. So, so, so that we we gotta make sure we got an account, and then we have to say, I'm not gonna let that bother me. I'm not gonna give in to that. I, usually, this would get cause me to go get you know some crown. But I'm not going to do that. This would cause me to go get that uh, uh, apple flavored uh, Patron, whatever. I, but I'm not going to do that. Hey, this, this, listen, this, this right here usually caused me to smoke that joint. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to give him praise. Let not sin. Whatever the sin is, whatever it is, I, I'm i just trying to uh, get you to think of some stuff here. And understand that you got an account. He said, let it not rain in your, in your mortal body. That's your responsibility as well. You got to understand you have an account and then you don't let it rain. Amen. Verse 13 says, neither yield you, uh, ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So, so, so real simple. I'm not going to give my body to sin. I'm not going to turn, turn myself over my in, uh, to, to uh, Satan and sin. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just stay with God. Amen. I made up my mind. I'm going to stay with God. Amen. I'm not going, I'm, I'm not going uh, to follow uh, the, the whims of, 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 of uh, sin. Mm -mm. No, no, I'm not going to do that. Verse 14 says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but you're under grace. Listen, grace is that time, is that time where we do what we hear. Amen. Grace is that time where we do what we hear. Law is that time where you must do what is written. Amen. And I promise you, child of God, when you do what you hear and you're hearing from God because God is good and the devil is bad, you will always keep the law. You will always keep the law. But let me tell you, uh, Jesus Christ, he's the end of the law for righteousness. He's the end of the law for righteousness. So if you're trying to keep the law to be right with God so you can win those browning points to get what you need, that's when, you, that's when God says, I have something against you. You left your first love. I have this against you. You left your first love. Jesus is our first love. I need to be in love with him. I need to operate through him. Is that good? Amen. All right. Now watch this. So, so evidence, that should be evidence in your life. Is that right? So, so now let's go to Romans chapter two. <clears throat> Romans chapter two. Praise God. Um, in Romans chapter two, there's a couple of things that I want you to see here. We're going to start at verse 11. And we're going to go from verse 11 to 16. So, um, but that, that, that evidence in our lives that, that Christ lives in us, that he's bigger than any sick circumstance and situation uh, should be evident in our lives. So watch this. Verse, verse 11 says, for there is no respect of person with God. For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. So if, there, if your life is dominated by sin, uh, judgment is coming. Did you get that? If your life is, I don't care if, if, if you're keeping a law, you're not keeping a law. Sin 
is not for the believer. Sinful lifestyles, living outside of the will of God is not for the believer. Now, there are some things that are written and you, you already know those things are sin. You're not going to go against those things. You already know those things. But listen, there's some things that are not written and God himself is telling you personally, those things are not for you. You don't do that. Watch this. You can look over there and see your neighbor doing it. And it seems as though they're doing fine and God is blessing them. But he's telling you that's not for you. Are you hearing me? No, listen, listen, it's, it's foolish of us to compare ourselves among ourselves. If we're going to compare ourselves to anyone, we should compare ourselves to Jesus. Amen. So, so do not allow that foolish thinking, that, that worldly, uh, ungodly thinking to get you out of the will of God. Amen. He says, I'm going to put you on a path that leads to the good life. Amen. So your path does not always look like mine. Come on, somebody. You need to understand what the will of the Lord is for your life. Amen. Amen. Because what he called you to, he didn't call me to. Amen. Listen, I, I have no problem with people out on the floor dancing and enjoying themselves, but God told me don't do that because there's a lot of people looking at you and they, they already say that them preachers ain't no good. So you just sit back. I, I, so when I go to parties and hang out with people, you, you won't see me on the floor. I, I, I'm sorry. Now, my, my, my daughter's going to get married uh, it, it sometime here next few months. You won't see me. I got to do what I got to do. But listen, hear, hear me real good. There are certain things that God tells individuals don't do. Amen. So either with the law or without the law, sin should not be in the life of a believer. Amen. Find out what he's telling you. Find out what he's talking to you about. Amen. Because David said in Psalms 32, he says, until I agreed with God that this was sin, my strength evaporated like water in the noonday sun. Listen, until you, uh, listen, he'll, he'll keep his hand. He said, his hand was heavy on me. And if God's hand is heavy on you about something that you, you wrestling with, turn it loose. Agree with him. Homo legeo. Say the same thing that God says about that situation. God says it's sin. Then that's it. Forget what people say. Forget what you think. Whatever he says is what you do. Are you hearing me? So turn, turn that loose. Now, watch, watch verse 13. For, for, not, uh, for, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So you got to do it. For, for when the Gentiles, uh, which have not the law, do uh, by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. So here it is. Some people were given the law and they were not keeping it. So if he's giving it to you, you got to keep it. Amen. Don't tell me to keep it and you're not keeping it. Don't tell me uh, you keeping the Sabbath when you know you're not. Don't tell me that uh, you're, you're doing these uh, uh, sacrificial things when you know you're not. Amen. But if you say you you walking in the law, then you got to keep every bit of it because if you fail in one part, you fall you fall uh, uh, failed in all of it. Amen. But watch this: if you don't have the law, why are you trying to keep it? Why are you trying to work so hard to make things right when, when Christ has already made them right and all you have to do is trust in him? So he says, listen, don't get caught up in all of that. You're under a dispensation called grace. And if, you're, if you understand what grace is all about, child of God, you will not get yourself caught up in legalism. You're not, you're not going to get caught up in these ideas that other people have given. You're going to seek his face. Amen. Because uh, like they said, folks ain't, they, they ain't got a heaven nor hell to put you in. Are you hearing me? Look, look at it again. Look at it again. Watch, watch this. Watch this. He says, verse 15, verse 15, which, which showed the work of the law written in their hearts, uh, their conscience also bearing witness and uh, their thoughts, the, the means while accusing 
else excusing one another. So, so watch this. He said in, in, in Deuteronomy that there's coming a day that I'm going to take my, my law and put it in their hearts. Listen, I'm telling you, your heart will condemn you, will convict you every time. If, every time you get outside the will of God, and, and I'm talking to born again folks now, every time you get outside the will of God, your heart will condemn you. you, you I mean, you can shake it off and try to run from it, but listen, he going to stay right there on you. Verse 16, in, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men, by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. He says, so there's a day coming where God's going to judge our hearts, every secret. When he, when he knows what he's asked you to unplug from, to turn from, will you go ahead and do it? See, there should be evidence in the life of a believer that Christ lives big in them, that Christ is their Messiah, that he is Lord. Amen? Romans chapter six, Romans chapter six. Let's, let's go there real quick. Romans chapter six, once again. Watch this, Romans chapter six, ver verse one. Verse one says, uh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Of course not. You, you, a, a believer ought not have sin because the way of escape has been made. Verse two, God forbid. How shall we... Uh, that are dead to sin. How shall we that are dead to sin? Remember, got, got a record somewhere, got an account somewhere that, that you died to sin. Uh, live any longer therein. You can't live any sin any longer. It's, sin is not, not, no, it's not an issue for a believer. We, we don't live in that. Amen. And I'm not saying that we live perfect lives because, you know, I know how y'all are. You be talking about, well, ain't nobody perfect. Well, listen, one, one long sacrifice, the scripture says in Hebrews, has perfected you forever. Now, Paul says, it's not that I've apprehended. I'm still trying to apprehend that that has apprehended me. Listen, Paul simply said, it's not that I've caught up with it, what he's done in my life. I'm telling you, he's already paid for your sins. I'm telling you, there's an account already paid in full. I'm telling you that because Paul said it in his writings. Now he says, listen, it's not that I've caught up with what has been done to me. I'm still trying to catch it. That's why he says I keep pressing. I keep pressing toward what ha he has done for me, not what I do for him. He says, I am what I am. I am what I am. I am what I am because of the grace of God, not because of my education, not because, uh, you know, I say I turn from this and I fast this and I pray this. No, no. I am that I am because of what he's done for me. Hallelujah. So, so you, 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 you understand now what he's saying here. He says, uh, uh, you, you got to no longer live in that stuff. Verse three, no, you're not that, uh, so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. So, so, so did you get that? So when you got baptized into Jesus, you also got baptized in his death. So, so here it is. Uh, first Corinthians 15 verse three says, Paul says, listen, I had to give to you first that which I received. And what I received, what Paul received was that Christ died for our sins. He was buried. And according to the scripture, after three days rose again. Oh, glory to God. Watch this. So when we were baptized into him, went down into him, we also went down with him in his grave. Glory to God. Now get this because this will bless you. When you went down in him, in the grave, all your sins went down with him in the grave. But when he came up, the scripture says he came up with a new body, told the disciples, you can't touch me now. I got to go to the father. And when I ascend to the father and take this gift, I'll come back. And then he told Th Thomas, touch me right here. Stick your hand right there. But you don't understand. You don't understand. See what he did when he went down and you went down in him. The Bible says all your sins went down with him. And when they went down with him, he came up with a new body. Oh, glory to God. What happened to the old body? It's still in the grave. There's a record. There's an account that is still in the grave. All your sins will bear it with you. You got to reckon that now. You got to reckon that. 
It's still down there in that grave. He came up a new, with a new body. That's why he says, any man that be in Christ Jesus is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, now all things are new. And guess what? Not just new, but all things are of God. You better act like you're a God being. You better act like you belong to him. You need to act as though your DNA has changed. I'm telling you, it's running through your veins right now. The blood of Jesus has cleansed us from all sin, all unrighteousness. You can't act like you want to. You can't do whatever you want to. You can't choke people, slap people, cut people. You can't do all of that stuff. You've got to work righteousness and show fruits of righteousness. That's what you've got to do. That's your responsibility because of what he's done for you. Watch this, watch this. Verse five says, for, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Oh yeah, yeah. Watch verse six. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, uh-uh, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So the old man has been crucified. Verse seven, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Come on, somebody. He that's dead is freed from sin. Verse eight, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with Christ. Verse nine, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Oh, glory to God. Can you get that one? Can you get that one? So uh, death, where is thy strength? Oh, oh grave, where is thy victory? Listen, you can't, it has no more power over you. Listen, you, 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 you got to get that glory to God. He said, he said, knowing that Christ, uh, uh, being raised from the dead dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Come on, somebody. He just died once. L listen, child of God, what he did for you, he created an, a way of escape in so many ways that this thing is just overwhelming when you understand all he's done for you. He's, he's done some stuff that even death won't bother you. Even death can't hold you. Death is not a, 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 a victory for, for Satan. Death has no more victory. Death has no more power. We're not even afraid of death anymore because of what Christ has done for us. Oh, glory to God. Uh, you don't have to fear right now. Don't you dare fear anymore because, listen, to live is Christ. To die is gain. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. See, the fear of death calls bondage for a lot of people. But we don't have that fear anymore because he made a show of Satan openly, stripped him, spoiled principalities. He destroyed the very power that death had. He took the victory from the grave. There is no victory there. That's why he says, weep when one comes in this world. Now rejoice when one leaves. I, I understand that there's so, so many of us right now, we have people in our lives, immediate family, and even some distant relatives and friends that have died in 2020, that have made that transition. But I'm telling you, child of God, rejoice because they are. If they knew Christ, if they, if they had him as Lord and Savior, they are rejoicing right now. So death, Death is not, not, not anything that Christians fear of. That believers, tr those who trust in the Lord, we're not, we not fear of that. And I know, it's a, I know it's a tough thing. I know it's tough, but it's, it's not, not something that we're going to be fearful of. Can I give you one more scripture? I, 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 I got a couple of things, but I, I, I got to go. My time is uh, running out. Let me give you this one more. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter two, and I, I want I want to tell you that uh, in my notes I, I got something here that you need to understand the big three. Uh, 
You need to understand the big three. In Ephesians chapter two, uh, we we're going to deal with a little bit of that, but what's the big three? The flesh, the world, and the devil. You got to get that, understand. Now, let me give you a definition for flesh. Flesh is those things that we do like dancing, smoking, gambling, uh, sleeping around. That's, that's the flesh. A lot of times when people in church talk about the flesh, they don't even know what they're talking about. Uh, when you go out there uh, playing cards, gambling, whatever, that's the flesh. The world. Here, here's, here's what we need to understand what the world is. The world is when you want fame, riches, status, and power among men. Fame, riches, status, and power among men. Listen, uh, there's more worldliness in the church today than ever. That, that that's all people talk about is some kind of fame. If you if you watch Facebook and people do what they want to do, but if you watch Facebook, there's so many Christians they put everything that they can ever imagine having, doing, going on Facebook. Why? Because it's fame, it's riches, it's status and power among men. This is who I am. Look, this is the stuff I got. Look at me. And and so what, what has creeped into the church is worldliness. And we sometimes tell people in our messages that God's not with them because they don't drive that kind of car. They don't live in that kind of house. They don't have this kind of bank account and they don't go on these kind of vacations. Uh, they don't eat at these kind of restaurants. Let me let me tell you something. That's that's worldly, for, child of God. When you when you have to go through your house and show people on Facebook everything in your house, you know the the chair that came from uh, China and the and the, and the bed that came from New Zealand and oh we get this from here, we get that from there. Oh what a wonderful thing we have. Oh look at this big stuff. Let let me, let me tell you that's worldliness. <laughs> that's worldliness, and the church needs to cut that out. Listen, there's nothing wrong with you having the finest of finest things, but don't, don't try to convince people that, they, that you're more with God than they are because you have the finest of the finest things. Don't listen, don't compare yourself to Jay-Z and Beyonce and all that other stuff. So, so with that being said, if a Christian has those things, do not think that they are better, but, but, but you can't flaunt it. Can't act like you know, you know, God's with me greater than anybody else. I'm, you know, I'm I'm balling, whatever. That's worldliness. Here's the next one: the devil. Anything which opposes the doctrine of by Christ alone. When you when you want to know what the devil is, anything that opposes the doctrine by Christ alone. Now, 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 that doctrine is the doctrine that that we must live by, must always uh, go by. It is by Christ alone. If I'm healed, it's by Christ alone. If I'm delivered, it's by Christ alone. If I've got money, if I got status, if I got fame, if I have power among men, it's by Christ put me there. He put me there for a reason, and I'm I'm holding up the bloodstained banner here. I'm not going to uh, forsake him. I'm not going to turn my back on. I'm not going to get down with them like that because that's not why he sent me here. Listen, and I use my money. I use my power. I use my influence. I use my fame to get the word out about who Christ is, by about who Yeshua is. That's what I do. It's not because, you know, I can drive a Maybach. It's, it, listen, it's not be, listen, Ted Turner could have drove all of that, but he drove a Ford Taurus. Come on. Listen, it's, it's not about that. It's about choices. It's about opportunities. It's about creating opportunities for other people. That's why he put you in the position that you're in. So, so stop all this foolishness and stop all this worldliness in the church. I'm, I'm talking about pastors and all these other folks who want to be big and great and you know, everybody see what they got. Listen, stay away from that because that's worldliness. Now, let me give you my scripture. So, 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 uh, I, I won't, uh, you know, act like I'm, I'm lost my mind. So in Ephesians chapter two, uh, here we go. I, I got a bunch of stuff, but I'm going to just give you a little bit of it. Ephesians chapter two, watch verse one. Um, uh, and you have he quickened, uh, who were dead in trespasses and sin. So that's the, that's the big thing. He brought me to life. From, from my sinful state. He gave me life from my sinful state. You don't even know who, who I was. You don't, Listen, you call me Bishop this and Bishop that. Oh, what a wonderful fellow. You don't even know. 
You don't even know where he brought me from. Yeah, I, I was a mess. And listen, I'm going to tell you something. I tell the people of spirit and truth this all the time. If you leave me to myself long enough, I will be a mess. Come on, somebody. I'll show out. I'll show my behind just as sure. Watch, watch verse two. Wherein in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, uh, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's who we were. That's who we were. We, we were that. Amen. Come on. That's who you used to be. That's, come on. Will you agree with me? I, I, I want you to say, yeah, preacher, that's who I was. I, I know who I was. I know I was a mess. I know I was once lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Come on. I, 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 I know who I was. I, I was a mess. And listen, if he leave me now, glory to God, I don't know what kind of mess I'll be. I'll be a whole new mess. And it'll be a hot, you know, on the piping hot mess. Come on here, somebody. Watch this. Verse three says, among whom also we all had our, oh, glory to God. We all had our conversation in times past. We all had our lifestyle in time past uh, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So how in the world you get to be so good now? How in the world you get to stand out so? How in the world you get to be big papa, you know, balling? You know, nothing can stop you. You all the way up. How, how you get to be all of that now without understanding that he brought you there? And if he brought you there, how you brag about that? How you, that, listen, listen, you got to understand you've been saved by grace. Least, this is the, not by work. At least any man should boast. Come on. Don't, don't get caught up in worldliness. Don't get caught up in the flesh. And please don't, don't you dare bring the devil up in here. That's not how he operates. And you know, it. that's not he, how he operates. Get your butt back in line with the will of God for your life. Let people know that they serving God from a pure heart. Not from the from the from the truck or the car or the house or the or the, or, the, or the airplane. Come on, listen. Thank God for the airplane, but this, that not no no no. I'm not serving God for that. Watch this, verse four, verse four. And this is the last one. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Come on, child of God. Jesus is the way of escape. And because he's the way of escape, man, we just trust in what he's done for us. And when he brings us to that place of prominence, of fame, or blessing, or whatever it is, we just go ahead and give him praise for it because of what he's done. Now, child of God, if, if, listen. I, I need you to be praying because people need the word. Will you go and share this? Will you will you like and share? Will you? Uh, I I don't know if you started those watch parties already, but uh, click on the link and follow us in YouTube and get the word out. Subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel uh, because this word needs to be spread. This 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 gospel needs to be spread, and and he he he'll use you to do it. If the message has been a blessing to you today. Click on one of the links below and, and uh, you can support the ministry financially. He says, now, listen, if, if, if you've been taught in good things, then you ought to communicate with your teacher, Galatians chapter six. So so go ahead and communicate with us. That means support us financially. Uh, you can do that by uh, PayPal cash app or the church app. You can download the church app and it'll be on your phone and you can give securely that way. For those of you who have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, you are lost and you will continue to be lost until you uh, allow him to become Lord and Savior in your life. And if you'd like to do that, say this with me. Help me, Father. I believe that Christ died for me. I believe that he was buried. And after three days, he rose again with all power in his hand. I receive him now as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you've done that, you're born again. Remember, if you have not received him, I pray a spirit of restlessness on you that you will not rest until you receive Christ as Lord, as Savior. So we love you. We, we pray for you. I pray that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. 
You know, Christmas is coming and I'm still challenging you uh, not to get in debt, not to spend a bunch of money. Let's have a nice meal with our family and just tell them how much God loves us and what Christ did for us. And so <clears throat> welcome to the body of Christ, those who have uh, uh, made that confession. And thank you, all of you, for your support, your, your continued support for the ministry. We love you, Pastor Jack and I. We love you so much. Spirit and Truth Nation, keep uh, keep praying. Please keep uh, Minister Fred lifted up uh, in the death of his mother and, and Miss Brown in the death of her sister. We're going to keep uh, lifting up Cameron. Uh, we, 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 we declare by stripes of Jesus, boy, you healed. Amen. And so thank you, uh, uh, Spirit and Truth Nation, all of you. Uh, we love you and have a great day. Uh, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we'll see you next time.